everyone. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our story last week. We learned about how God got Elijah's attention and spoke to him in a still, small voice. And God did that to encourage Elijah, who was really having a hard time. Elijah felt like he was all alone. And God wanted to, him to know, yes, you are not alone. I am with you everywhere you go. But also he heard Elijah's prayer and he sent Elijah a helper. And that helper's name was Elisha. So this week, we're going to learn a little bit more about Elisha. Um, and I'll tell you what happens to the end of the story of Elijah. But before I do that, have you ever had to do something that you really did not want to do? You don't like to do? Well, I'm going to be honest here. I do not like to do dishes. That is one of the least favorite household chores uh, that I have to do that I really don't like to do dishes but they have to be done and so somebody's got to do them and so usually you know I have to do a job that I don't really like to do and you know in our lives sometimes God may ask us to do something that we really don't want to do and we really struggle with how am I going to do this because I really Lord I really don't want to do this well in our story today we are going to look at a man who was asked to do something that he really didn't want to do and we're going to see how God worked to change this man's attitude in our story time today. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about Elisha. Elisha was kind of like an apprentice or a student of Elijah. And scholars think that he followed Elijah for about seven years. And at the end of the training period or the seven years, it was time for Elijah to go. And God sent a chariot of fire to pick up Elijah and take him to heaven. And Elisha witnessed this. And But before Elijah left, he had asked Elisha, what, what do you want me to do for you before I go? And Elisha asked him for a double portion of his spirit. Now we know that Elijah was a great man of God and he had a really difficult job to do and so I think Elisha in his mind is thinking, well, Elijah's going to be gone now. This is going to be on my shoulders. I'm going to have to do this job. I'm going to need all the help I can get. And so also Elijah was kind of like a father figure to Elisha. And a lot of times in the Old Testament, we read stories about the oldest son in the family gets a double portion of the father's wealth. Well, this is kind of the same kind of thing, but it's more of like he's asking for a double portion of what God has enabled Elijah to do while he was here on the earth. And Elijah, it becomes more of a picture of us, of Jesus. You know, all through the Bible, we might see different people who have some of the same characteristics and qualities that we see in Jesus. And so in this uh, God enabled Elisha to work miracles in his time. And we know that Jesus worked a lot of miracles while he was on the earth too. And so this was kind of God's way of showing that this is my man. This is the guy that I've chosen to do this job. Um, some of the miracles he did was he raised a boy from the dead. And he helped heal the water in Jericho. And then he even helped feed a lot of people, just like Jesus did with the loaves and the fishes. You remember that story? He helped a widow to be able to provide her. She was in debt to someone, and they were threatening to take her children away from her. And uh, Elisha enabled her to find a way to make money to pay off her debtor and to take care of her family. Well, today's story, we're going to look at to get back to the thing about not wanting to do something that God asked us to do, in our story time today, we're going to meet a man who was in need of God's help. But when God's help came, he was like, I don't want to do that. I really don't think I can do that. So we're going to talk about a man named Naaman. And I'm going to read to you here in a minute from Second Kings, the story of Naaman. He was a really important man in his kingdom. He was not an Israelite. He was from Syria. And he worked for the king. And he was a military uh, general. And he had a really important job. His job, he was a great soldier and was known for his ability to lead the men into battle. And But there was a problem. Naaman had a problem. And he had a skin disease called leprosy. And in those days, leprosy was not a good thing to have. There was no real medicines, no real treatments for 
of this skin disease and it made you have sores all over your body and sometimes it kept you from being able to do your job or to be in the position that you need to be in. And so let's go ahead and read. We're going to read from 2 Kings chapter 5 and we're going to read from, let's see, verse 5. It says, or no, 1 through 5. Sorry, 1 through 5. So let's start at the beginning of chapter 5. And it's in the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Aram, or Syria. Uh, he was a very important man in the eyes of his king. And he was very highly respected, because the Lord had helped him to win many battles over Aram's enemies. And he was a brave soldier, but he had a serious skin disease. Companies of soldiers from Aram had marched out, and they had captured a young girl from Israel. She became a servant to Naaman's wife. She spoke to the woman she was serving, and she said, I wish my master would go and see the prophet who is in Samaria. He would heal my master of his skin disease. Naaman went to see his own king, and he told him what the girl from Israel had said. I think you should go, the king said. I'll give you a letter to take to the king of Israel. Now, these are their enemies. Israel is enemies of Syria or Aram. And so the soldier is getting a letter from the king saying he's coming in peace. He wants to see the prophet because of his skin disease. Okay. So then it says he left and he took 750 pounds of silver with him and 150 pounds of gold. And he took 10 sets of clothing. He carried the letter to the king of Israel, and, and it said, I am sending my servant Naaman to you with this letter. I want you to heal him from his skin disease. Now, in this story, Naaman, who was a very important man, had to get permission from the king to get treatment for his skin disease. And this, fortunately, you know, God puts people in our lives for a reason. And in this story, the little servant girl from Israel was put into Naaman's life, I believe, for this main purpose, was to tell him that I know someone who can help you. I know someone who works for God, who has the ability to heal you from leprosy. And it's funny because this great man listened to this little servant girl, and he took her advice, and he got permission to go and get treated for his skin disease. So let's continue to read uh, in this same chapter. We're going to pick up where we left off. The king of Israel read the letter, and as soon as he did, he tore his royal robes. He said, Am I God? Can I kill people and bring them back to life? Why does this king send someone to me to be healed of this skin disease? He must be trying to pick a fight with me. Elisha, the man of God, heard what was going on. So he sent the king a message. He said, I hear you're struggling with this. He said, tell me, tell that man to come and see me. He said, I can help him. And he will know that there is a prophet of God in Israel. So Naaman went to see Elisha. He took his horses and his chariots with him, and he stopped at the door of Elisha's home. Elisha sent a messenger out to him. The messenger told him, go, Wash yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Then your skin will be healed and you will be pure and clean again. Elisha didn't have like a horrible request for this man to do. But when Naaman heard this, he gets angry. And let's follow on. We're going to continue reading through this to see why, why did Naaman get so angry at this request? Naaman went away angry. He said, I'm sure that he, I was sure that he would come out to me and I thought he would stand there and he would pray to God and I thought he would wave his hands over me and my skin would be healed. And what about the rivers in Damascus? Why can't I go home and, and wash in those? The Jordan's dirty and nasty and I could go home and wash in a clean river at home. So he turned away, and he was burning with anger. But, you know, again, God puts people in our life that help us to see things from a different perspective. And this is what his servants told him. They said, you are like a father to us. 
What if the prophet Elisha had told you to do some great thing? Would you not have done it? But he only said to you, Go wash yourself, and you will be pure and clean. Why aren't you willing to even just do that? So, you know, sometimes God asks us to do things that are difficult, or maybe something we don't want to do, and pride gets in our way. And sometimes we struggle with that. We might be angry like Naaman was, that God asked us to do that. But then when Naaman looked at things from a different perspective to say, well, it's not really a big thing to do. Just like for me, doing the dishes is really not a big thing to do. I just don't enjoy doing them. But Naaman comes to his senses and he goes down into the river. And guess what happens? It tells us in verse 14, he dipped himself in the river seven times. He did exactly what the man of God told him to do. And when he came out, his skin was pure and clean, just like the skin of a young boy. Naaman learned a valuable lesson here. It seems like Naaman had to figure out that his pride was what was standing in the way between him and God. And I wonder sometimes, did he get healed on the first time he dipped in the water? Or did he have to go keep going and do seven times before he saw the result? Naaman was humbled, and he realized something that a lot of people from outside of Israel had not realized yet. He realized that God, that the God of Israel was the only true God. He was amazed, and you know what? He wanted to pay Elisha for what Elisha had done. But here's something I want you to remember from this lesson. That healing was a gift from God. And a gift is usually free, isn't it? In Ephesians chapter 2, it tells us that the gift that salvation is a gift from God, and we don't have to work to earn it, and it's not something we have to pay for. It's a free gift given freely to us so that not so so that we don't boast about it, but that we realize that God did it for us. And this is an important part. You know, we need to have faith in God. There's nothing we can do to earn salvation from God. It is not the things that we do or the things that we pay for that make us worthy of God. He chose to us to love us and to give us salvation for free. He sent Jesus to live on the earth to help us to understand how much he loves us and what he was trying to do for us. And you know, pride can get in our way too. We want to think there's more to it than just having faith. But that's not what it is. Faith is required, but we think we have to do something in order to earn it, and we really don't. God's favor is on us because he loves us. That's the beauty of it all. He has already accepted us, and he sent Jesus for us. That shows us how much he cares about our salvation. Christmas is coming up here really soon, and you know, we all think about gifts, and we love to get gifts for Christmas, don't we? Well, this is God's greatest gift that he could give us, freedom from sin and death. And if we want it, all we have to do is accept it and believe it. So, if pride is standing in your way of accepting this free gift from God, I want to tell you I'm praying for you. I'm praying that like Naaman, you will be able to lay down your pride and to follow God's command and have faith in Him. It might not be something we feel like we need to do, but it's very important. And I'm going to be praying for you as we go through the next couple of weeks. We're going to start Advent lessons next week. We're getting ready for Christmas. I hope you'll you'll come back and join me as we look at some of the people that Jesus uh, had an impact on their lives when He came to earth as a baby. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for stories in the Bible that help us to see what it is that you want us to do. And Lord, if we have pride or something that's keeping us back from accepting your free gift of salvation, Lord, I pray right now that you would help everyone within hearing of this lesson to know that you love them, that you accept them, and that all they have to do is believe. I pray that you would remove that pride from them and guide them in your direction. Watch over us, protect us, and I 
Uh, thank you so much for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye for now, and I'll see you next week.